Yes, YouTube, Danestar back. Um, bit of a quick, little different one uh, for me today. It's around 11 o'clock. I'm going to open the shop in about an hour. Um, just wanted to show I've really got hardly any pickups, really. A uh, few pickups. I'm uh, going to show some new stuff that I've got in the shop. Actually, I suppose I've got one big pickup because the one item I've got isn't for sale. In fact, two items I've got aren't for sale. Um, and just give my uh, opinion, not that it's fucking valid, on uh, some videos that have been talking about the price of retro games. So, without further ado, to quote Big Mike, uh, let's start off with some pickups. So these, I actually was given these, oh God, where me, Rob and Stu went down to Big Game House to pick some stuff up. Um, but I left them in Rob's missus's car when we come back. So I've only just got them. And they are... Um, fucking Neo Geo. I've got to work out where the camera is. I'm doing it on my phone for a change. Neo Geo Pocket Colour Games. Uh, I'm not too sure. Rob said he gave me one and James Basabi sent me two. So this is King of Fighters. Um, contact. First Contact. King of Fighters. First Contact. This one looks like um, some sort of soccer game. 98. I'm assuming um, James at Import. Oh, God. Retro and Import Gaming. Something like that. Name so long. So complicated. Just be one word. No numbers. Um, and I want to say, this one's like a King of Fighters as well. Round 2 or something. This one's definitely from Basabi because it's got the uh, yen price on the back. So, thank you, James, for sending these. Sorry it took me so long to teach them. But, um... Fucking Rob, it's getting some off Rob in it once you've left it with him. Uh, the other item, kind of picked up for myself when I bought I bought a load of, I'm looking over here because that's where it is on the shelf, a load of Japanese Mega Drive games off Craig's here again for some stock in the shop because I've got one customer who asks for uh, Japanese Mega Drive games. And he got one game that, I'm not too sure if I've got it loose cart on the Famicom, but it was boxed and I thought, you know what, I'll chuck that in with the bundle and out myself. It's just called Dragon Ninja on the Famicom. Um, but it's Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja. Absolute shite game on the NES. Um, and obviously I'm guessing the Famicom. So I used to play it on the Amstrad back in the day. Much better game on the Amstrad in my opinion. Um, what shall we do next? We'll leave that one a bit. I'm looking to the left. You can fucking see what it is. I'll show it in a bit. So... In the shop, we have been adding some stock. Um, the latest thing is some Dreamcast games. They're all new physical releases for the Dreamcast, I'll say. They're all by um, different game creators, but they're all from the same publisher, Wave. I've got no sort of contract with them. Um, I just like the product they do, and it's something nice for me to have in the shop. So the latest one, I believe, is uh, John Riggs' latest game. That Well, his only game. Yeah, yeah. BB's 2, it's very much a NES game, um, obviously that plays on the Dreamcast, these will play on any Dreamcast by the way, PAL or NTSC. Uh, I have watched some gameplay of this, very basic game, but a very cheap game as well, very cheap game. If you want to order any of these, message me on, we've got the website, the website's up, hidden chest at, sorry, www.hiddenchest.co.uk. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, our spammers everywhere, I'm easy to find. Uh, this game is very much uh, like a Micro Machines. It's called Rush Rush Rally Reloaded. It comes with a soundtrack. Uh, as I say, plays very much like Micro Machines, but has a more interactive environment. Uh, next one, I think a lot of people, uh, this is the one that everyone seems to want. This one, Flea. Uh, platformer on the back. Uh, does it look kind of like graphically style? Looks a bit like uh, Super Meat Boy. Another very pop popular one is Intrepid Izzy. Again, very much a platformery style game. That snow level actually reminds me of was it Wizard and Liz? Just just the graphical style. Let's try and get it so you can see it. These are all various prices. There's nothing over thirty quid, so. You know, if you want to get anything, mess with me. Uh, and Xeno Cider. Uh, this is very similar to Space Harrier. Um, 
as say uh, James from is it Retro and Import Gaming? He came in yesterday. He picked up a couple of games. Not going to spoil it because I think he might be doing a pickups video, and he may do a review sort of thing. So yeah, them are the new games that I've got in store. And obviously, I've had some pickups. I've had some Mega Drive stuff, but it's all gone straight on the shelf. The systems have gone to be tested downstairs. Fucking downstairs is a mess. Um, the next pickup I'll talk about, I'm not going to show you because it involves moving the camera. Um, I've got a cocktail cab. It's kind of not working. It's got power to it. It's going to be a restoration project. It's definitely something for myself because uh, it takes me back very much to my youth when I used to go to the Simons Engineering Club in uh, Dudley. Um, they had a cocktail club. I used to play Shaolin Road and Jailbreak on it. So I would love to get some sort of uh, multi-board in there so I could play those games. Also, at the same time, as keeping as much original as possible. I mean, looking at it, I'm saying it's a, a 70s style cocktail cab. It's got all Japanese writing all over it. I'm picking brains where I can. So anyone who knows anything about cocktail cabs, please get in touch. Liam got an electric shock off it because he fucking touched the fucking transformer yesterday on it. So the sad one use, I guess. And the other thing, let's get it out of the way. When I bought the cocktail cab, it was in a summer house. And in this summer house, this was in here. I don't know if I'm going to get it on camera. It's a BMX bike. It's a Tornado. The guy told me it was from the 80s, doing a little bit of research. He said it was from a company in Stoke who only used to make limited amounts. I don't know. Uh, it looks early 80s, about 83. A few people have commented it seems popular on my Facebook and Instagram. Looking at it, the handlebars need lining up a bit with the front wheel, but it's cool. It's a cool bit of kit. I've been riding it up and down by the shop. And again, it's something for on display in the shop and something for myself. You know, the one advantage of having your own shop is you do get to locate some cool stuff for your own weird obsessions and collection. Um, so that's it really from the pickup sort of side of things. Um, I have got the telly on here, you can't see it, it's just got uh, who I watch on YouTube sort of thing and funnily enough, uh, Joe Gaming Girlie is the video that it's scrolling through at the moment. Uh, she did kind of like a pickups and a response to people who do these clickbaity shitty sort of videos about I'm going to leave YouTube, I'm quitting collecting gaming. Also get your views, don't waste your fucking time with them. Um, literally they're not quitting. I mean, said person... I know they like to get the games really cheap. Probably want 25% off anything, yeah. Get, get to fuck, you know what I mean? I do anyone discount anyway, you know. My prices aren't expensive. But what I'll say is these people are complaining about the price of video games and the hobby in general. I'll let you into a spoiler here. Although I physically are the person who writes or puts the prices on these uh, games, I don't set the prices. I go on places like CEX, I go on eBay last sold listings. You people who are buying, you're the market, you are setting the prices of the games. You know, if a game's just sold, last three copies have sold for 50 quid, guess what? That game's worth 50 quid to my shop, so that's what it's going to be. If it's sold for 30 quid, that's the price it's going to be. If it fluctuates, depending on the condition of the game that I have compared to the one that sold, you know, it's going to be there or thereabout, but independent shop buyers even cex even ebay those people are not setting the prices the people who are buying are setting the prices now if that person sees that value in the game then that's the value of the game it's as simple as that and what i will say is if you come into my shop there's a lot more titles under five pound than there are over 50 pound do you understand what i'm saying so you know for every expensive game there's about 10 20 cheap games and if you're just getting into the hobby, that's probably the way to go. Pick up cheap games. You can still get good deals. Like I get walk-ins. I give fair trading. I go to the boot sale. I'm there at five o'clock in the morning. If you want to get good deals, you've got to do the footwork. But as for these channels that are going out there, there's loads of them. One wears a stupid hat. He was telling people, don't bother getting into the hobby. You know why? They don't want you in the hobby. Because then they... They control the market. They, they have all the expensive games. It's easier for them to get games. The way I see it is, is we're all grown adults here. 90% of everyone who collects games works. It's your money. 
do what you want. I ain't holding a gun to no one's head to buy a game yet, and neither is any other seller. It's all your choice, you know. And if you get some enjoyment, like I do, out of this stupid bike that I bought, or this arcade, this cocktail cab I bought, what arms it doing? Just, just collect your way, do what you want. If if you decide one day you wake up and you want to get rid of it all, so be it. If you wake up one day and think, I'm going to be a lunatic and go for a full set of 360, do it. As long as you can afford it, as long as you're not bankrupt yourself, as long as it makes you happy, just do what you want, YouTube. Take it easy. Thanks, that out.